I'm, I can't believe I have you. <laughs> you look at what's going on over there today. Well, so I, I'm looking out my window. I'm hanging out the window to get some tiny cell service. Uh, the entire city of Lviv is totally dark. Um, the all, all of Ukraine. Uh, I mean, this, wait, I'm looking. <laughs> you know, every I see lights and like, every everything makes you move. Uh, so. What happened on October 10th, that Russian infrastructure tar uh, attack, this is bigger, this mm -hmm. is scarier, uh, more effective, and it's even scarier for two additional reasons. So from uh, the capital, Kyiv, currently has power, but many cities around Ukraine do not have power, and uh, everywhere from Kharkiv in the east to Lviv here in the west was hit today, but it's during the G20 summit. So the Russian foreign minister is in Indonesia, meeting with the world leaders and trying to claim that there's, you know, somehow this is a, that they're doing the right thing while they're attacking civilians and civilian infrastructure. Uh, and it shows they have no shame. And then the most probably I could say chilling development, uh, Poland was hit by all the reports we've received by two Russian missiles mm -hmm. within the past few hours. Uh, so NATO territory was hit. And this has been, um, uh, you know, uh, people thought this might happen for a while because every time Lviv is hit, Lviv is only about, uh, I'd say, 50, 50 miles from Poland. Uh, and But today, with, I mean, there were Russian missiles, at least 80 missiles. And Arrow, it's hard for me to know exactly what happened because it's very tough for me to get Internet and communicate uh, with the world and even with people around Ukraine. And that's another scary thing. And as we wade through this kind of sleepless but dark night, you know, we don't know what's next, and, mm -hmm. and we're sort of crippled, and 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 and, and that's that's terrifying. Isn't this what they were almost predicting a week ago at this time when when the one Ukrainian city was freed? They said, okay, what are they up to? What's up next? Exactly, and 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 you know, I mean, anyone that studied the history of warfare, I think in our sort of silly American media, like, oh, you know, when Ukraine has a major victory, it's going to lead to escalation. I don't like that term escalation mm -hmm. because obviously Putin is playing for victory. Ukrainians are fighting and struggling and gasping for victory, uh, which means, you know, to, to the right to exist. Uh, and Putin, Putin's sense of victory means Ukraine doesn't exist. So it's, there, there, you know, there's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a zero sum game here. And when yeah, it was a major victory for Ukraine to get back her soul, and that was the only major city that, that Russia ha has taken, uh, you know, occupied. Uh, and, and so that, so we, we expected something. In fact, Arrow, yesterday, uh, Monday, you know, we've had the Monday attacks in Ukraine for the past month and a half. And yesterday, Monday was peaceful. We, I don't think we didn't even have any air alarms. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with friends uh, earlier today, but before this stuff happened, uh, we were sitting in a cafe and we're saying uh, we all feel like we, we want an alarm because because the, the sense of uh, just waiting, the longer you wait for, for something to happen, you think the response is going to be even more terrible, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, and then all of a sudden, yeah, about uh, uh, mid-afternoon today, uh, the entire country was uh, under alarm. And then pretty soon, uh, you know, we, we heard explosions here in, in Lviv. And then, you know, I have messages from friends all over the country reporting explosions and then probably the, the scariest thing imagine this you're sitting in a, in a just imagine you're sitting in your home and you get a message from friends halfway across the country and they say we see missiles flying over us and they're coming your direction oh my god <laughs> what do you what do you do <laughs> yeah well, see, I've, I've always had that fear inside my heart that they say that if there was ever, you know, the big war, we would have only 45 minutes before they would start hitting the United States. And so, you know, I've, I've had that fear my entire life. Well, uh, and, and this, I mean, t tonight, you know, two, according to what we can tell, uh, and according to my Polish sources, uh, two Poles are dead. Hmm. Yeah, uh, they are, the yeah, the farmers. Hit, yep. Yeah, we, we've, yeah, I, we've learned and, that it's farmers. And, and, you know, so, so right over the border from Ukraine, but, uh, you know, but this, I mean, this shows, you know, the, the, the recklessness of Russia. And then I think we have to step back and say, you know, what, what is this about? Like, if, if Ukrainians in 2014 did not say we want to be radically free, we want to control our own destiny, we don't want to be controlled by Russia, this war would not be happening. And it's the same thing. You know, yesterday I went to the funeral here in Lviv of a Taiwanese uh, vet, uh, military veteran who came here, he was 29 years old, he came here to fight for Ukraine. 
because he understands that his country faces the same threat yep, yep. From, from Beijing that Ukraine faces from Moscow. And the more and more people in the West can see that, you know, if you want to be free, that you, this is the battle you have to join because uh, the, the, the tyrants, and this is, you know, I mean, and I, I when I, Okay, we lost our contact with Joe at this point in time. We're going to see if we can reconnect here. Arrow, one, two, three. Yeah, you're back. Okay, great. We're back. And as we're back, the bells are chiming. Uh, you know, the bells are not electronic. Uh, these bells have rung for centuries. So you, the city's quiet, but I hear the bells ringing in the midnight hour. I, 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 I can uh, hear the bells in the background as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a reassuring sound. Uh, and, you know, actually, uh, where uh, parts of the part of the city where I am, uh, the, the Mongols and the Turks tried to uh, overcome these walls, and the people of Eve uh, resisted them. Uh, and so there's a long history of resisting, uh, you know, uh, invading enemies here uh, for, through the centuries. Yeah. But uh, this, I went to this funeral yesterday of the Taiwanese uh, fighter who came here for Ukraine, and they flew his mother in from Taiwan. And the Ukrainians were, they were waving ta Taiwan flags, and they were supporting his mother. Um and, and you, you, I saw. I mean, it was it was very difficult to to witness, uh, but I saw there, you know, free people standing together. The people of Taiwan, they know what's at stake because they know how easily they could lose their liberty. And this is the message of you know. I think together we try to show to to America. I mean, you know, Americans. You know, I just saw the governor of Texas said, oh, he declared an invasion for Mexico, and I know it's a real problem, but it's a different type of invasion when you have missiles and rockets and Iranian drones, you know, destroying your buildings and your people. <laughs> um, that's real. And more and more, I mean, I encourage people to go back and look at the history of the 1930s, to watch the movies like The Darkest Hour about Winston Churchill, to really remember that time. Because we, we hear the same rhetoric and, and today. And, uh, you know, the, t t Churchill was a voice in the wilderness. Everyone else said, oh, Germany's fine. Yeah, they take over Poland or some nation. It won't be a problem. Well, we, we know what happened. And, and it's the same story over and over again. And I encourage people in America, especially now that we that two missiles hit a NATO country, to get wise and to start reading their history very quickly. Yeah. So the, the president of Ukraine today uh, made uh, it was it was like a peace offering. Why is it that the Western world says it's still not enough? Well, uh, because, well, you, you, Ukraine's peace offering, I mean, it, it requires one basic thing. Russia has to withdraw okay. all of its troops from Ukrainian territory. And then the reason for that is, you know, if there's some kind of fake peace, a peace deal that, that lets Russia take the territory that they've taken, and that shows that might makes right. That shows that, you know, actually gives Russia, hey, all you got to do is bully and oppress people and you can get what you want. Uh, and, and Ukraine knows this because in 2014, Russia, Ukraine, you know, the, the people took over the country. And so the Ukraine was very weak. They, they, the, the army had been controlled by pro-Russian people and the, the citizens kicked them out of the country, but they had no structure. They only had themselves. And Russia tried to take over cities like Odessa and Kharkiv, and the citizens fought back. But the Russians did take the Crimean Peninsula, and, and the world did nothing. And so for eight years, then, Russia was emboldened. And so Zelensky's point now, speaking to the G20, is if we make some deal now, then, then, then Russia is just going to, they would step back and get even stronger and then do this over again mm -hmm. in six months or two years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, this, 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 you know, we, I mean, everyone, you know, we love to say never again. It's so comforting to say never again, but never again is happening. I and mean, we look at the atrocities in Mariupol and the Kiev suburbs, and now we're starting to hear the news of what's happened in Kherson. Uh, and you know, I have many friends who have had relatives in Kherson with, with whom they could not speak the past seven months, and and unspeakable horrors uh, that they went through. And you know, there's stories that you, if you're Ukrainian, you couldn't be on the streets of Kherson after 3 p.m. The Russians would just shoot you. I mean, it's exactly the same as what the Nazis did uh, in, in places they occupied and to the Jewish people. And so the, the, we, we, have, we have to say, you know, well, you know, all of our amazing structures and, you know, governmental, uh, non-governmental organizations, what is the purpose of it if these atrocities continue again and again and again? 
and, and this is what we have to fix. We, we have to figure out a way. And we need leaders uh, to do this. And uh, you know, I, you know, we need, we need voices like Churchill. Uh, and and I, 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 I hope we get more voices like that in the West. I don't hear them very loudly right now, mm-hmm. except except for, except for the leaders of the Balt. The only people who really understand this outside of Ukraine. Um, of course, there's some Americans, but especially the Polish people mm-hmm. and the people from the Baltic states who suffered under 70 years of Soviet oppression and who, who are neighbors of Russia. They understand it. The people of, of Taiwan understand it. Uh, the people from Hong Kong who are no longer permitted to speak, they understand it. Um, but we, we really need America to understand it. When you travel the countryside or in going to these cities in Ukraine, what, what does it smell like? What, what does it look like? Uh, well, you know, I was just uh, the past week, I was in uh, southern Ukraine on the Black Sea coast. I was in Odessa, that beautiful city on the Black Sea. Uh, and then I went to Mykolaiv, which is only about 30 miles from her song. So I, I was in Mykolaiv right as her song was being liberated. We could hear the noise of the artillery. And as we're driving through there, uh, one of my colleagues is from France. And he said, this looks like France. You know, it's, you have beautiful vineyards and rolling hills sloping down to the sea. And it's it's absolutely exquisite countryside, so verdant and fertile. Uh, uh, the amazing shades of green, uh, even even in here in November. And uh, uh, the region of Kherson is known for its watermelons. And so most of Ukraine is agrarian and, and natural. Uh, you know, you have the, the mountains, the Carpathians uh, in the west. Uh, and uh, which is sort of a, you know a high mountain culture, and then most of the rest of Ukraine is sort of just fertile fields, and it's it's a, it's a giant garden, and uh, it really is a beautiful uh, uh, beautiful nature, and uh, and that's what you smell. But then what you smell in, you know in times of war, I mean whether I'm in Kharkiv or I was in a, I was two miles in a village two miles from Russia, we were delivering food and water um, to to recently liberated uh, Ukrainians. And Russians were firing artillery shells just two blocks from us. And that's the horrible smell, you know. That's the smell of war and smoke. And uh, and I also experienced that in Kiev. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking to see activity out the window. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, so you have this pleasant, verdant land. But then, you know, when you're in this thick of it, you can smell the, the, the smoke of war, which is yeah. a horrible thing. So you you've changed in the way that it's uh, you're definitely looking over your shoulder now. I mean, it's it's you you've you've become a different person than the the first episodes and stuff like that. It's like you're so aware of everything around you right now. Yeah, I mean, for example, tonight. I mean, so the whole city's dark, and and so now it's cloudy. But a few hours ago, you could see the stars as though I was in the mountains, or as though I was in the Outer Banks in North Carolina. You could see all the stars, and then all of a sudden, and we're, so. Tonight, just imagine the city's in total darkness from five o'clock tonight, and uh, there's different a few different cafes stayed open. People lit candles and they tried to serve people food and some drink, just to keep going. And uh, I was standing in the street and and with some people and we're looking at the stars. And then all of a sudden we see moving, you know, what little lights moving in the sky, and we're like, what is that? A rocket? Is that Elon Musk's satellite? You know, what, what is it? And all of a sudden you become hyper attentive uh, yeah, to every little movement mm. and every little noise. Mm. I, I read an article as we get, uh, you know, the Russians want to take this war into the winter months because they feel like that, that things will really, you know, intensify because Ukrainians are going to need a food as well as socks and things. How can people reach out to make sure that the Ukrainians have socks, have underwear, have, have uniforms and things like that? Well, I, I think Ukrainians are very self-sufficient. I mean, they know how to make things. And I think this is a thing that Russian society doesn't have. But Ukrainians, uh, they know. And, you know, I, I was uh, mentioning my, my French colleague, and he was saying how one of the best soups he ever had was uh, cooked by a Ukrainian outside of a bombed-out apartment building. You know, he said it was better than a Michelin restaurant. You know, Ukrainians, they, 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 they know how to survive. They can build fires. They know how to grow things. Um, I brought, uh, um, we brought some uh, water and grains to a, a village near Russia, and the woman was so grateful she gave us apples from her garden. And so Ukrainians know how to, to grow things, they know how to make things, um, but I, th- I think the biggest thing that Ukrainians need, I mean, yeah, of course they need warm clothes, 
uh, for the soldiers and everyone tries to help with that. But weapons, weapons, to, you know, uh, the high Mars, the weapons mm-hmm. from America, the long, you know, th- this is like Ukrainians will fight this fight. The world doesn't have to fight it, hopefully. Mm-hmm. But as long as Ukraine gets weapons and support from America, and, and there's a lot of negative rhetoric in America about, you know, oh, we're, we're just sending money to Ukraine. But you don't realize you were sending money to the bodyguards of Western civilization. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and yep. if we if we see it that way, then it means that the world doesn't have to fight as long as you give Ukraine weapons. So yeah, all the little support and we you know I welcome support for our project, UkrainianFreedomNews.com, but mainly encourage Washington, which you know, like they they spend you know how much money, how many billions to, of equ- dollars worth of equipment that we leave in Afghanistan versus how much have we given to Ukraine. So you know, let's give more to Ukraine than we gave to the Taliban. The black vest that you're wearing, is that a bulletproof vest in the pictures that I see? What What is it that you're carrying? Yeah, but it's not, I mean, it's not, uh, there's a level four bulletproof vest, which is uh, very light and also uh, very effective. And I have a, like a, a what do you call it? Like a, a boom dock version. Uh, it's uh, just the best I could get. Uh, so it's very uncomfortable. Um, but, uh, but it, you know, if a missile hits you, you're dead. But if there's shrapnel, yeah, it could it could protect your heart. And and, and so, you, you in in those where in those places where we are, you have to you gotta have the best on. Hmm. Um, and uh, it's you know, and that's the other thing. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, now the military is very well equipped after months of support from the world. Uh, but you still have these volunteers who go to the extreme edges uh, to evacuate people and to bring people food. And they're usually not well equipped and they don't have insurance plans and they just wear whatever they can find. And then, you know, imagine like you go to a village, you have a bulletproof vest like I did and a helmet. But then you meet the, 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 the grandmas, the babushas who are still there and they don't have this stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's tough. Because of Veterans Day, I've been blessed with the opportunity to talk to many U.S. soldiers, and and the one main theme that a lot of them have talked about is is that feeling of where they want to be needed. Are you seeing any American soldiers over there, or is that we can't talk about that? Uh, no, d- no, definitely no active duty um, soldiers at all. And I know I can say this very clearly because I have many friends who are active and even reservists who would love to be here but they cannot okay um but but instead what we do see we do see many veterans um from 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 all from 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 britain from the uk uh france all over the world uh taiwan and uh there's one veteran in particular uh from the u.s who he put most eloquently at the sentiment of most of these people he said for 20 years he gave his life and his career and his military expertise to America for Iraq and Afghanistan. And he said he went home to America and he couldn't sleep at night because yep. he didn't know what the point was. But then he came here to Ukraine. He said, I can sleep now. Yeah. Because I, I know that now this is clear. I'm actually on the side of something that's very clear. I'm standing for good against evil. And, you know, this is the Ukrainian people. I mean, everyone here, including the Americans, say the american veterans here who are retired they they say you know the russians are the orcs and the ukrainians are the hobbits it, it is a clear good versus evil uh, battle and i think a lot of foreign fighters and and foreign volunteers and, and even me to to people uh, foreigners are coming here for redemption and i saw this when sean penn the yes actor, came. yes yeah he came to me with Zelensky. he's been here like four or five times he was here three days before the war and just to film some other movie and then he got stuck here i actually had custody of his bulletproof vest for a couple of days wow uh, because because a uh, long story but he was trying to escape uh but then he came back and the fact that these some of these celebrities come back here like they everyone that's here who comes from outside is on a quest for truth and meaning and they find here something that's more real than any movie than any video game than any political contest and and that's why they come back and so there's really something very beautiful happening here despite all the horror and the fear and and and, and the ravages of war but this is where this is the edge of time and space this is the edge of truth uh and, and so so many seekers are coming here to ukraine now and joining the effort wow where can they go to get more information and to to donate money 
Well, for our purposes, yeah, you can go to uh, our, our website, ukrainianfreedomnews.com, and there I have my daily reports with WGN Radio, and we welcome support uh, for, for our volunteer journalists. And then we, we also, small batches, deliver supplies to soldiers, to hospitals, and to, uh, to, to especially to people in villages that have been recently liberated. So we welcome any support there at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. All right, buddy. All right, you, you be careful tonight, all right, and keep, keep up to date with me. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right. Good night. Stay strong. All right. Thank you. I will. Thanks.